let's talk about how to gain velo, shall we? We shall. But first, you're going to have to hit that subscribe button because this video is for my subscribers only. So I'll give you a second to do that. Okay, so lots of people on the channel said that you wanted to see my off-season throwing routine. So I've made a couple of videos on that so far. I have my game day warm-up routine, which is important to warm up first before you do any throwing. Then I have my plyo ball routine, which is important to do as a warm-up before you get into your max intent throwing. For the sake of this video, I'm going to assume that you're already warmed up and you've already thrown. So I'm not gonna cover that. If you wanna see more about that routine that I do, you can check out those videos. I'll put the links in the description and you can see the video thumbnails here on the screen. They're on the channel, you should check them out. Anyway, let's talk about Velo. I do it a little bit differently than uh, most of you have probably seen. So check out my program here on the screen. You can see the names of the drills that I'm doing. Uh, you can see that I'm alternating between weights and drills. I have some linear drills and I have some rotational drills and I have some what I call anti-rotational drills, which is basically just forcing the body to uh, feeding the rotation or you know, not feeding the rotation. We'll talk about that a little bit more when I talk about the drills. So I've already warmed up. I've already done my plow balls. Let's jump right into the throwing and talk about what I'm doing and why. So the first thing to talk about is the weights of the balls. And there's two things that I want to hit on here. One, the weights change every single throw. And the purpose of this is to force the body into the most difficult scenario that it can face. Um, so you're gonna bounce around. It can never get comfortable with only a five ounce or only a six ounce. Uh, the more you throw those in a row, the more the body just kind of checks out and you get less actual benefit, in my opinion, uh, to those subsequent throws. So while you are per, are, you're probably safe to throw three or four in a row without risking that, I just go to one and I force myself to just be as variable um, and adaptable as possible. That's the first thing. Uh, the second thing is I'm not throwing too heavy of a weight. Uh, the heaviest ball that I'm throwing is a six ounce and I'm only doing three of those throws. Now I have 24 throws total scheduled here on the program. Three of those are going to be six ounce pull downs. And the reason for that is I'm trying to train my body to move fast and be explosive. So I'm trying to get an overspeed component here. This is a max intent plyometric day, if you think about it that way. And I'm trying to get max speed and overspeed on my upper body. So the best plyometric exercise that you can do for your upper body is throwing. Uh, so to build velocity, uh, if you're trying to build a new peak of velocity, a new high, then you probably do need to do some heavier baseballs as well as lighter baseballs. Uh, I've already done heavier baseballs. I've already built my peak up to plenty high. I just need to get back to that peak. So I'm going on the other end of the spectrum and just doing a lot of three and four ounce throws mixed in with some five ounce throws. So first drill that we're gonna do is a pull down. Now my focus on this drill is to run as fast as I possibly can, which is not very fast, but I try to run as fast as I can first. Now that is going to build up as much linear momentum as possible. There's going to be a lot of energy in the system. And so it's going to force my front leg to hit the ground and stop that excess energy in order to transfer that energy to the ball. So that's the important part of this drill, in my opinion, is block the front leg. That's kind of what we're training here. This is definitely a linear drill. You're definitely trying to rotate the torso uh, as fast as possible. You're trying to separate the hips and the shoulders and all that good stuff. But what this is forcing you to do mostly is to land on the front foot and not collapse that front knee so you can get a solid block. Now when I'm running and throwing this ball, I'm not thinking about that. But the purpose of the drill is forcing that action. And that's how this whole program is designed is to force the actions and the adaptations that I want without me having to think about them. My only thought in doing all of these drills on this day is to throw the ball as hard as I possibly can. But I have different drills scheduled in there to force me to do the rotations, to do the blocking, to get the arm action and stuff that I want so I don't have to think about that. So you can see here on the pull down, uh, I don't do a great job of blocking my front leg. It's not like it gets super stiff, so I definitely have a ways to go on that. That's probably why my velo is down from my all time high, about four miles an hour. Um, I'm still in the hundreds, which is good, but uh, got a little ways to go on that block leg. Uh, but I'm running as fast as I possibly can, 
and then I'm slamming that block leg down and I'm just trying to throw the ball as hard as possible and you can see all that excess energy in the deceleration phase when I kind of flip up and over my front leg and try to catch myself before I somersault into the net. So that's pull downs. The next drill is what I call a clock drill. Now imagine a clock, 12 o'clock, one o'clock, two o'clock, etc. Your point in the middle where the clock hands are is your point where you're going to throw from. The 12 o'clock position is kind of back by the mound and the six o'clock position is up by the plate, at least for, uh, for me, that's how I schedule it out. Now I'm basically just using these different numbers to tell me which direction I'm going to run from. And this is a 4.30 clock drill, that's what I have here. Um, that's what I'm doing. So I'm gonna run from the 4.30 position. I'm gonna take a couple hard steps to build up some momentum, hit with my left leg, stop that energy, rotate, plant my right foot, and then try to throw as hard as possible. Now, I'm trying to spend as little time as possible uh, in the center of that circle. I'm trying to hit, rotate, and throw as quickly as possible, but I'm also trying to throw as hard as possible. So there's a nice blend between quick footwork and velo. If you go too quick with the footwork, the velo is going to drop. If you go too slow with the footwork, there's no point to doing the drill, and the velo is probably gonna drop. So this is forcing me to change directions, absorb force with my left leg, pivot, absorb force with my right leg, stay balanced, stay athletic, find a way to center my torso on my hips, find a way to get some shoulder hip separation, find a way to then deliver the ball to the target. This is forcing the shoulder hip separation that uh, we didn't force in the last drill. The last drill was a linear drill working on the block. This is a rotational drill working on the shoulder hip separation. Now I'm definitely gonna block, definitely gonna have arm action and all that stuff in these drills as well. But the main focus here is the shoulder hip separation. After that, we go back to a pull down and the next rotational drill that we're gonna do is called a drop step pickoff. Now I call it this because it's basically a pickoff to first, but you wanna gain some ground towards your target uh, most times when you pick off, you're just going to swivel your feet and get the ball to first as quick as possible. This is not about being as quick as possible, but about throwing as hard as possible. So you're gonna drop your throwing arm foot. So for me, it's my right foot. You're gonna take a step backwards with that. You're gonna pivot around. You're gonna rotate the hips, rotate the torso, and throw this ball as hard as possible. Now this is another rotational drill, forcing the hips to go first, then the shoulders, and then the arm. And if you've watched my plyo routine uh, video, you'll be annoyed at hearing me say that because I've said it about 100 times in that video, but that's the proper sequence. Hips first, then torso, then the arm. Um, so that's what this drill is working on. Again, I'm just thinking throw this ball as hard as possible, but the drill is taken care of sculpting the mechanics for me. After that, we are back to a pull down. That's a linear drill. And the next rotational drill we're going to do is a short stop double play throw. Now I'm running from about 1030 on the clock face, so you could call it a clock drill from 1030, but basically you're running to second base, you're gonna swipe your foot across the base as if you're catching a ball from the second baseman and you're gonna let one rip towards first base. So you can see how I'm kind of simulating that here on the screen. Now this is what I call kind of an anti-rotational drill and it's definitely not anti-rotational. The reason I call it that is in the drills before, I'm in a position where I'm feeding the rotation, where I'm rotating my hips first and then my shoulders, but the drill is forcing me to do that. In this drill, my hips are already open and my shoulders are already open, so I'm having to kind of force my shoulders to get back into a place uh, and force my hips to get back into a place where uh, I can generate some shoulder hip separation because I'm starting off wide open. Um, and so that's kind of why I call it an anti-rotational drill. But the key here is basically to uh, get to second base, you're gonna stop, you're gonna build up some energy running to second base, you're gonna stop that basically with your left foot, uh, you're gonna swipe the right foot across the base, and then you're gonna land and just let this ball eat as hard as possible. Um, this is a great drill uh, for kind of that anti-rotational, it's one of my favorites, add some athleticism to it forces you to stay balanced. It's really easy to get off balance here uh, and just kind of continue running out towards uh, second base position and not actually stop the energy and direct the ball towards the radar gun. So it's a really good drill for that in my opinion and that's why I have it scheduled in here. So after that, we're back to a pull down and then we're going to the last of the rotational drills which is a clock drill from nine o'clock. So I'm basically just running in from nine o'clock on the clock face. I'm hitting with my left foot, I'm then pirouetting and finding a way to 
hit the ground with my right foot, roll the hips over, get down with my left foot, block the front leg, and let this ball eat. Uh, this one is very challenging, especially if you don't have good footwear. All of these uh, are challenging if you don't have good footwear, so that's one key that we should talk about. Get yourself some shoes that have grip on them or do it with cleats so you can get the most out of this. But anyway, uh, hit with the left foot, rotate, pirouette, find a way to separate the shoulders and the hips, uh, and then let the ball eat. Um, this one's gonna be a little bit more difficult to maintain balance kind of in the first base to third base direction. Um, it's definitely a rotational drill. So this is forcing you to kind of uh, keep your balance. It's forcing you to be athletic and get the hips in front of the shoulders, in front of the arm, etc. So proper sequencing here without having to think about it because your only thought is to throw the ball as hard as possible. And those are really the five drills that I do. Now that's eight throws and I will alternate through those uh, three times. So I'll do 24 total throws. As you guys can see here, there's different weights. So I try to get three pull downs with a six ounce, three pull downs with a five ounce, three pull downs with a four ounce, and three pull downs with a three ounce. That's 12 throws. So then I'm gonna get a uh, clock drill from nine o'clock with a five ounce, four ounce, and three ounce, uh, drop step pickoff with a five ounce, four ounce, three ounce, clock drill from 4.30, nine, uh, five ounce, four ounce, three ounce, and the shortstop double play, five ounce, four ounce, three ounce. So that's 12 more throws, and that brings us to our 24. So that is why I do some of those drills. There's linear drills, rotational drills, and what I call anti-rotational drills. Uh, force your body to be athletic, force your body to accept energy, redirect energy, and find a way to throw hard at the same time. Uh, this is building a large base for you, so you're adaptable. If you get a little bit off balance in your delivery on the mound, no problem. You know how to handle that and still throw strikes and still throw hard. Uh, if you are a little bit tired, if, you, if your front leg gives out on you a little bit, doesn't matter, you've built a strong base as a thrower of objects, because pitching, at the end of the day, is just throwing in a specific way. So that is my velocity day. That's what the drills look like. That's the purpose behind them. I'm working on my mechanics without having to think about them. It's one of the best things about these athletic drills. If you structure them right, if you do the right ones, uh, these ones work for me. There's a lot more that you can do that will probably work better for you, but this is just what works for me. So you guys asked to see what I do and this is what I do. So hopefully you guys enjoyed the video. Hopefully you guys learned something. If you have any questions or comments, go ahead and leave that uh, down below in the comments. I will try to get to those. And if you have any suggestions for future videos, go ahead and leave me a comment about that down below as well. I like making these videos for you and sharing this information. So let me know what you guys wanna see next and I'll try to make it happen. Uh, if you haven't hit that subscribe button already, you cheated, you were supposed to do that already, but I'd ask you to do that now. It helps keep me motivated to make this free content for you. And with that being said, I'll see y'all in the next video. Have a good one.